Oh man, awesome cast. Those guys are fantastic. But what if you want to talk about wrestling? Well, we've got you covered. Right here on the Sorgatron Media Network, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It might just be the best show anywhere, ever. Go find out. SorgatronMedia.com Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we talk about balloons for the internet, androids, well, your phone, and humble bundles. All of this, and Chill is in the studio showing us the latest gadgets in his pouch. Stay tuned. Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said there. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast coming to you from the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg, and yes, I saw Man of Steel over the weekend. Did you enjoy it? It's kind of a hot topic around these days. Uh, we're uh, here to get awesome with me as usual. He's, uh, again, uh, doing the tech support thing. He has to be home-based. He has to be tethered to the wall. Uh, but he found his company shirt. It's uh, Chachi. Uh, hey. And we'll talk about his uh, Android economy code he found uh, later in the episode. How you doing, Chachi? I'm doing well. I see you're well stocked in the Mountain Dew. Oh, they're doing this uh, iconic summer thing, and it se- it seems that whenever Mountain Dew does a promotion like that, I'm addicted. You're all in. You're all in. Yeah, I'm all in. Excellent. So, um, and also with us, since I I got to try to get somebody in the studio, Josh, to replace you. Can't you just green screen someone in? <laughs> He's just. No, that's the that's they're hidden behind the microphone. You're still kind of behind the oh, mic there a little oh, bit, a wrong little, way. little bit more. My left um, to right. Is... He's back there somewhere. Chilla joins us. Ooh. I just like to have somebody in studio to talk with. Holograms. Holograms. The, yeah. We're not. I don't have. Who's the many rapper? Connects. They made the hologram. Uh, uh, Tupac. Tupac. Get Tupac on. Get some Tupac. They were, they were saying they should have like uh, uh, Tupac to uh, Steve Jobs at the I, keynote. Yeah, that's what they were. I saw a bunch of those rumors. <laughs> really? One day, one day they'll do that. He's the awesome evangelist. He's always got cool stuff he's shown up with, uh, and uh, and plus his home automation that will probably kill him someday. Someday. <laughs> so we'll talk about that and other awesome things. Then again, this is the awesome cast. We we like to talk about cool stuff uh, on the internet, social media, uh, uh, technology. Uh, you know, we're trying to be more about the awesome than the news. Really, just whatever's kind of uh, cool out there. We like to talk about. Uh, so uh, if you you have something cool, you have any comments or anything else, uh, hit us up. Contact at awesomecast.com we're on google plus we're on facebook we're at awesomecast on twitter and of course you can join us in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com like these fine folks have uh and you can watch the stream here live uh uh, tuesday nights at 7 p.m eastern and join us and, and influence the show really uh so with that let's get uh into it with our awesome things of the week uh, was, do you want to you you guys want to go go first, Chachi? I think we should explain your title here. Um, yeah, I have uh, I have two of them. Um, first off, <laughs> while trying to root my phone because the LG Optimus Nine has this uh, completely dumb setting where you're not allowed to save applications to the SD card, so you're basically limited to the the phone memory. Which is uh, what's that? Which is. Uh, two gigs. Two, two gigs? gigs? Yeah. Wow. I know. What, did they go, um, go out and buy, like, a fire sale of old memory chips for their probably. phones? Probably. It's LG. Um, but, uh, so I was in, I was following instructions trying to root and misread the instructions uh, and found out that if you hold the volume down button while you turn on your phone... Uh, without warning, it wipes your phone. That so seems like I'll an odd that combination. Today. That sounds like the not so awesome thing of the week. Like I'd be sad. Yeah, like, yeah I was. Uh, I was really pissed off. Well, because so I don't know if you know if you encrypt, if you encrypt and put policy on an Android device, and then, well, if you put policy on the Android device that states that you have to encrypt it and you can't use the pretty trace whatever on the screen for a password mm-hmm. you when you rip the policy back off because the device is encrypted encrypted devices can't use the screen shape thing yeah. so now i have to wipe my android device so i can use the pattern the pattern lock 
Oh, that's and nice. I, I, I'm sitting here saying, do I really want to wipe my device? I'll just have to use a four-digit pin. It's not that bad, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but my other, uh, my my awesome thing of the week, um, there's a, a new humble bun- bundle out, and uh, well, first off, it made a hundred k in the first two hours. These guys have been doing amazing with the humble bundles lately. Yeah, um, so I mean that is uh, that in itself is amazing. Um, but secondly, there is a game <laughs> in the humble bun bundle that is called Oregon or, or I'm sorry, Oregon Trail um, Director's Cut. And what it is is it's essentially Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail um, modern day with zombies. Nice. Is that a station wagon? Yes. Um, so you you <laughs> gather your party and uh, you tra- have to travel across country, avoiding zombies in a station wagon. Wow. Uh, that game in itself is worth the bundle. Now, is this all straight Android, or uh, is it PC as well, or anything? Uh, you know, you can get it for uh, PC, Mac, Linux, and Android. Oh, cool. Um, oh, cool. But uh, this this particular bundle is for is a. Uh, Everything but iOS, essentially. Mm. But yeah, but that's cool though. Like I, th- I think it's um, I think it kind of speaks to hey, look at the cool stuff going over on Android, you know. Yeah. Um, but but these are all, but also interesting that these are all apparently cross-platform great games with PCs and and, and Macs as well. Um, but but still, that, that's pretty cool to, to showcase something like this. Uh, I've participated in, in a number of humble, humble bundles at this by this point. Um, I don't even like I, it's to the point. If I see one or two games that look kind of interesting, I throw them a few bucks like that I can, and uh, and uh, you know, this is this is how you get an obscene amount of stuff in your Steam account. Well, you know? it, it, between that and. Um it, it depends on what's there and where they put it. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes you can get away with just getting the the normal bundle and you're not that upset because, uh, well, the way Humble Bundle is set up, if you're unfamiliar, is you donate anything you want and you get the, the general bundle. Can I do- donate my Windows RT device? <laughs> no, I mean money. Money-wise. Um, but... Uh, if you want, they always have a couple bonus games. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want the bonus games, you have to meet or beat the uh, average donation. Yep. Which at this point, they they have Frozen Synapse and Broken Sword Director's Cut. If you pay more than uh, four sixty eight to unlock, and they just the last one they had had like it was um uh, whatever team does Psychonauts and Brutal Legend and all those games. I can't remember. I want to play. I want to say it's like Argonaut or something. Uh, chat room, if you can correct me on that. Um, but uh, it, it, like I was like, oh, it has Psychonauts. I already had that on Steam, and they don't actually like give you another one if you do it through the, through the donation like this. But Brutal Legend, after like eight bucks, you 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 got that unlocked. I'm like, sure, you know. Uh, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely right, worth it. and and it was low enough when I donated. It was I had to meter beat four twenty seven. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the first four games alone, if you were to pay for that, already beat that. Mm-hmm. So I I mean, you you toss them the extra money, you get the two extra games, you try them out, you don't like them, you don't really lose anything. And it's pretty cool. It's all customizable. Uh, There's a slider here. They they, they got pretty good graphs going on about, like, how much, what platforms have been buying, what are the average on each platform, what's the average in general, how much they've made. Uh, Their top top contributors, including uh, Protest the NSA at $256, by the way. Um, And you can also uh, uh, find out, like, you can also decide how much actually go to developers, the charity, and how much you tip to the Humble Bundle uh, organization themselves. Uh, Right, and no offense to Humble Bundle, but I usually just give my money to the developers and charities yeah yeah i usually split the developers and trip uh, charities myself uh, the tip i think is a new thing i don't remember that last time i did this so, uh, 
if you don't mind me asking, because I'm not familiar with this. Mm -hmm. So where it says like there's the average purchase Windows, Mac, Linux. Yeah. Do you have to buy for a specific platform, or by buying no. it, do you get No, I don't platforms? think so. Uh, what, what happens when you get it is um, you, you, you go through, and, and, and uh, for me, I always get them on Steam. So it's mm -hmm. when I put them on Steam, if they're for those, all, all those platforms, I automatically have them on whatever platform I log in on. Um, so I don't know if they're just, they're, they're, judge, they're probably judging that by the browser uh, read, readout. At that point. Okay. Because really it doesn't matter. Because I go in, it gives me Steam keys. I go over to Steam I'm on any on. version and plug those in in whatever versions it gave me. Right? right. So, I, yeah, my guess is based on the browser thing. Because uh, I don't know uh, any other way they'd really be able to check that other than you say, hey, I want the Linux versions. Now, I mean, you can also, you can do the Steam thing, but you can also actually straight download a lot of these games. It says right here, uh, this, they're, they're cross-platform, DRM-free. I just go with the Steam thing myself. Mm -hmm. And also, cool, they also include uh, soundtracks, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, video game soundtracks that are all MP3 and FLAC formats, uh, if you'd like, as well. Uh, something they've been doing for a while here. So uh, uh, back supporting. Oh, I guess the charities are the Child's Play charity, and uh, I didn't know they added this one, Electronic Frontier Foundation, who we were talking yeah. about a few weeks ago about the uh, the podcast uh, patent trolls. Uh, so really good organizations, and of course, Ch Child's Play that helps kids. I mean, it's kind of uh, inspired what we do with Chachi Plays here locally. So um, awesome. Anything else you want to say about that, Chachi? Nope, that's about it. It's really cool. Go check it out. Humblebundle.com. I sign up for the newsletters so I, I know when something's going on. Um, and I'm going to get my charity on uh, myself. So uh, I'm just trying. Yeah, I, I, I bought it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's charity, you know? And it's just like, and I got some more games to play. You know, maybe I'll get to them. Maybe I won't. But I just gave money to charity. You know, and it's not that. They're not asking for that much. So, no, not at all. It's great stuff. Chilla, what do you got this week? Uh, bring up the last link I said, if you don't mind. Um, sure, give me a sec. No problem. I, I actually, I recently procured... Oh, this thing is amazing. A Samsung Galaxy camera. I gotta get... There we go. And it runs Android. So there's a there's a picture of it. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. You can see the back panel. The, the whole back pan, panel is a flat piece, piece of glass. Um, so it looks like they just attached the Galaxy S4 on the back of a camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, oh, wow, all of a sudden my uh, Google Now is working. <laughs> um, that That's the first. It likes my internet better than yours, apparently. <laughs> well, I'm not on your Wi-Fi. You're though. not on my Wi-Fi. That's right, because what is this thing on? This is on AT&T's network. That it, phone, <laughs> or I'm sorry, the camera. that camera is on the AT&T network. So I have full access to Google Play, so I can do Facebook, Instagram, whatever mm. social network. Google. I, like, you, I saw you flipping through. There's Google Plus on that thing. Yeah. There's so I can take a picture, and boom, I can quickly upload upload to whatever. It has a micro SD um, card slot, so you can. I have 64 gig of usable space. Mm -hmm. um, 21x zoom, which is it's pretty nice. Low lighting, it, it can blur, it gets motion blur, but what doesn't? Um, what else? Uh, oh, oh it came with it came with actually an extra removable battery, which nice. is really nice. So I understand this. Um, um, and, and you said that like like the cool uh -huh. application list is you can uh, take your picture on this and it automatically goes up to like say Dropbox. Right. That's so I have Dropbox awesome. set up to now I do have Dropbox set up. To only use Wi-Fi, yeah. So as long as I'm on a Wi-Fi network, um, you can sense. set it up to say, just use your, yeah, use the the, the network. It's not LTE enabled. It is unfortunately the, still uh, on the, the 4G. The quote 4G. The H, what is it? HSPA plus, plus network. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I was in Philly at uh, Comic Con. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pictures came out great. Was on Wi-Fi instantly uploading. Nice. Um, it, the the other nice thing is is the camera app, which Android was originally built to be a camera OS. Mm -hmm. It ends up working out really well. The camera app you can set shutter speed, aperture, you can set everything through obviously software, um, and then you can actually do your Instagram filtering ahead of time. They have built-in filters that you can actually, as you're taking the pictures, apply. 
I haven't played around with that a lot, um, but I don't know. It, it's it, it's a brilliant idea for someone who's amateur ish or just wants a device that can connect but take better pictures than a phone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sixteen megapixel camera quality. And it really is like like. Uh, it- the, the thing about like that that kind of device is we think of like well our phones are phones first and then these other things but really it seems like they're com- becoming more of these other devices that is the camera first and mm-hmm. it can also do phone things not calls of course but right. but still like it, 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 to have this kind of mobile device is is really interesting and these little there's like kind of fringe thing you know battery life's great I, I was really impressed with that because I've seen some devices that I mean just sit there and you watch the battery percentage go down especially with that large of a screen yeah but um the other thing is is obviously i mean we were talking about earlier could you skype from it well i haven't tested that out yet but i have no forward facing camera <laughs> so i'd be able to show you what i'm looking at but you for it'd be one of those can you see me yeah like, am i yeah. in frame like I, back I, when we had a 3gs <laughs> trying yeah. to do that thing right um, but still, I think there's a lot of uh, interesting applications. Well, you know how I think about these things. Like like going to an event, and here I'm covering and doing a hangout from this event with a really awesome camera mm-hmm. that has built-in you know, 3G, 4G. I mean, I think there's a lot of cool things. Like, like, let's go down to... Uh, let's go down the regatta and, and Google Hangout from there, you know? Or well, something like that. I mean, I'd really be interested to play around with that because I, I wonder if the Samsung add-ons would work with that. Mm-hmm. Because you can actually say, take a picture, zoom out, zoom in. So you could actually control the camera on a tripod. It's threaded for a tripod. Yeah. You could control the camera. And it also, if you're if you're in the Samsung family, mm-hmm. um, you can actually remote control it from a Samsung phone. So you can see what the screen sees on your phone. But the camera could be mounted and you can remote control certain aspects of the device but it uses i can't remember what samsung software is called you might be able to do it with their keys software i don't know because the the other weird thing is is that trying to get because think about it i'm from apple world Mm -hmm. trying to get video to sync audio all the stuff that you're used to syncing with an ios device Mm-hmm. I have to use the the Samsung sync software. Now it jumps. I mean, it grabs iTunes. It it it'll it integrates with iPhoto. It, yeah. it does yeah. all of that. But it's getting there in the first place, right? But it's get, getting it there. And the other thing that I realized too is is that I'm, what was weird with this device, and I think it's probably something with Samsung. When I plug this device into the Mac, it does not identify it as like an SD card removable device mm-hmm. much like my iPhone or iPad and or even like the Motorola Zoom tablet where I have the S- I have the device mounted as a drive and I can completely interact with everything on the device this it's like they locked it down so you they really don't want you messing around with a lot but it, and it's very menu driven. We're not meant to give like we're not meant to give you this mm. as an Android device. It's a phone. Oh, I kind of do some Android things. Josh, yeah. you had a question? Yeah. It, well, do you prefer it over your DSLR? Um. So far, I, I'm going to be honest with you and say yes, only because of the the zoom on it. So, I feel like. And, or and when I'm in, as long as I'm not in bright light, because mm-hmm. you can't see the back screen if you're like if you're on a in a bright sunny day, you know you just can't see your your phone screen. Yeah, because you have a DS, you have, you have a DSLR, issue. you at least have the eyepiece to fall right. back on. <clears throat> so th- I would say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some playing around with this, <clears throat> especially this weekend, um, <clears throat> and really test it out as a replacement. Um, but so far, I would actually purchase this over my digital SLR, my DSLR. Mm-hmm. I'm sure someone maybe like Rob would say, no, mm-hmm. I would never do that. You're not, you're not on that level. But I'm not, I mean, I've, I've shot some weddings and stuff like that. I would probably stick with the digital SL, the DSLR for those venues. But for 
small stuff, comic cons, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. What, take it. A, I, I don't know video cameras that well, <clears throat> but I mean, as cameras get smaller and you can use more mobile devices, sort of. I mean, d- do you really need the huge over-the-shoulder camera anymore? No, I mean, you or see. You I mean, get you, away you, with... you, you see the cameras in front of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we really we really don't do that anymore you know mm-hmm. um i mean the biggest cameras we have are probably about this one that's pointing at you uh, which really these are hand cams you know mm-hmm. uh, i mean they're a little bigger but they're, they're hand cams um and, and they have nice size chips in them like they're good three chip cameras and, and really like for sd that one right in front of you i don't know it doesn't look much you know good the way we have it hooked up right now but it, it does the best stuff when we do wrestling in low light situations um and people seem to be and again we're mostly producing stuff for dvd there but the stuff for online everybody's really happy with it Mm -hmm. i mean we're not going to be shooting a big multi-budget movie with these things but it gets the job done on so many levels um i don't know and i'm still iffy i mean we got things like the gopros that are like those smaller things and there's projects we're looking at we're maybe applying something like that uh in situations where that makes sense where you can't you know strap you know a panasonic camera to a hood of a car or something Mm -hmm. like that you know um but it I, and I've been playing a little bit more and more uh, with my phone, you know, my, my my iPhone 4S doing video, and it's still like it's interesting, but it's there's so many reservations you have to make with it, you know. Um, we look at I, I think they the um what was it the Chicago Times some Chicago newspaper it was Chicago Sun Times I believe got rid of all their photographers yes and their writers are going to have to use iPhones for photography and some and I video think there was a little more of that story that they, they were yeah. just they got rid of the staff photographers. I think they're still going to use freelancers. Contract. Yeah, yeah, they just they're just like we don't need to have these people on staff considering how much of our pictures can come from this other source. And yeah, I think we get to this point where maybe they can do enough, you know. But I think in certain situations, like you definitely need that. When Samsung photographer that, to do it, mm-hmm. you know, if you're just like I'm at a city council meeting, here's a picture of the guy. I I don't think you need like so much. You don't need an artistic picture there, do you? Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm like here's something at a fair, you know, it, it, you know, versus you know the guy that we send you know behind the lines, you know, or something like that. I think there's there's a difference there, and I think they're like okay, we're going to cover the general stuff. We don't need an artist to just deliver the facts visually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I'm kind of speaking like I think this is how they're thinking not that I completely agree with all of it uh, but I see where they're coming from especially these times where you know who has one job anymore mm-hmm. you know so when I like I look at Samsung I think they're going to be coming out with the sa- this same type device but it's going to be a it's, it's more of a phone first yeah but it's the zoom on it's still going to be Ten X. That's still and that's still pretty spectacular. And then we've mm-hmm. seen like Nokia is doing interesting things with their camera yeah. stuff, right? Uh, so uh, I, I I think this is an interesting niche thing. Um, I don't think you're going to see anything as fantastic as we're seeing with people shooting stuff with DSLRs. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I've seen wrestle, wrestling shows shot in DSLR. I know, right? <laughs> I think it's just that's what they had on hand, mm-hmm. and they had two of those, and they had a camera like one of mine in the back, and. And I, I'm still really interested. I haven't seen it up for sale, but I talked to the guy. I'm like, I want to see how your DVD came out because I'm really curious about the kind of cameras you used. You when I, I saw it, I would never, I would never do that. Not they have any experience with DSLR. Mm-hmm. So, but look at how um, Rob's came out when he shot Awesome Cast two podcasts ago. The audio was great. The video was great. Mm-hmm. He had that on a tripod, didn't he? Well, which one are you talking about? Or no, actually, I think it was three pod camps ago. Yeah, he shot Awesome Cast on, or or a Chachi says or something. Yeah, it was the Chachi thing. Yeah, on yeah. his digital SLR, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it, I mean it came out good. I mean you have to be very, I mean you have, to, you have to be very careful. Lighting is more sensitive with those things. Okay, focus is more sensitive with those things. That's why I'm worried about doing a high, you know, movement sport mm-hmm. thing like wrestling. You know, at ringside. You know, uh, I think, I mean, you know, every once in a while, Josh, you, you probably saw that with that camera that, that they won you over the weekend. That that focus goes out of whack every once in a while, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, he doesn't like that <laughs> camera. It's a, it's a smaller, it's it's this one here that, that's mm-hmm. on me. I mean, it's a smaller kind of higher end, but still one chip kind of camera. Uh, that's fine HD, but it's still like it's smaller. It doesn't have wise angles. So, you know, it's a little iffy to try to do 
uh, some of those things. Um, great for just sit down interviews, though. My stuff mm-hmm. looks great doing that, but I'm, I'm getting a lot of those lately. So, hey, you had a question from the chat room, Chilla. What's the question? I don't have my. I know, I know. I want to let sorry. you know. Uh, Wheels uh, is uh, still planning on getting an S3 or an S4. It wants to know what you suggest. I like it. now. I haven't had. I've played with the S3. I haven't gotten a chance to play around with the S4 yet. The only thing that worries me when I read about the S4 is like even the 16 gig device mm-hmm. has 8 gig of overhead from Samsung. So I heard like this is like it, it sounds like this is getting a, a similar issue that we have with the Windows RT. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be interested to see now what Chachi was talking about earlier with with loading apps to the SD card. Mm-hmm. If the device can do that, then I could see that working out well. The one thing I would urge you to to look at and play around with in the store or find someone that has one is that I even notice on the Galaxy, because the Galaxy camera automatically boots into camera mode because mm-hmm. it's a camera first. Mm-hmm. If I try to take a picture as soon as the camera loads and I t- from being in an off mode to an on mode, it can't find the SD card. It's like the camera comes up and it must be still loading part of Android OS in the back mm-hmm. and it hasn't mounted the SD card yet. So I can't it can't access and it'll actually say failed failed to write to SD card. It still takes the picture and stores it locally, but now I have to remember to go in and move the photos. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I'm going against the 8 gig that I have. Yeah, and I only have I think it's five gig five gig usable out of that. Is this eight. general? Do, do, do Android phones uh, generally have such low uh, space on board? I don't know, Chach. I mean, Chach would be probably a better person to ask about that. Yes, yes. Generally, it's a lot smaller of a device unless it's like the uh, I don't know, like the galaxies. Yeah, um, but even then, like Chilla said, half of it's the operating system. Mm-hmm. Once that's where I, I almost think that if I were going to make, if I made the jump to Android, I would really look at like a Nexus, or and I mean you're going to think I'm completely insane. The the Samsung Galaxy that's six hundred, the Samsung Galaxy S four that's like six fifty for the device, but you get vanilla, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. vanilla Android on it because you know you're always going to have I'm with you on that. I went you on that. I can't. I cannot imagine. Doing an Android device that isn't like a clean Android. Like if I want it, I want Android. I want straight up. I, I don't want any hooks because the whole reason. Because every time I see one of these phones with like you know plastered with all that you know whatever Samsung puts in there, whatever AT and T puts in there for whatever deals, that reminds me of those HP computers you'd get ten years ago that has an AOL installation, Compu because oh, it's a little maybe Compu a little serve. later, CompuServe, <laughs> Prodigy. That you can't get rid of the icons and this thing and everything's got an antivirus that you never renewed. I have, every time I sit down with uh, somebody's computer, I have to delete whatever they had on there and say, here, just use AVG. If you get that much problems, start paying for it, but don't worry about it. You know, well, I, And I look at it, uh, for me, it's more about getting the most up-to-date ROM. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't want to have to wait for AT&T or Verizon to approve the ROM to push exactly. down to my we're, device. We were talking about a couple weeks ago, poor Bobby here in the chat room can't get Vine because he's still on two points something or another on his MyTouch. <laughs> You know, it's like, mm-hmm. really? You can't even do that? You know, and I think he said he bought it six months ago. Correct me in the chat. I know you're in there. Um, that's obscene. And, and that's where I think like you you have to really. In the Android world, and I question some people say, well, Android users are more technical. That's why they pick Android. But it's also the cheap, it's phone. the cheap phone. So you get it, and you don't know what you're getting, and you get pissed because you can't run the latest version of Vine or Angry Birds or whatever the thing is. Because they're like, well, you have an old operating system. Like, well, can't, why can't I update it? My friends on the iPhone can just hit a button. Why can't I? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have a technical friend that, that that's running whatever on his and on, on a sweet camera Android, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> you know, and that why, I mean, why can't I do my thing? You know, and, and it, that's I think that was a major point, and that's where. Apple definitely wins 
they, they show that graph out, but that that mm-hmm. laughable percentage of how many people are on what versions of the operating system. And I think it was less than ten percent are not on 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 iOS six right now. When I, I really give credit to to Google because if you go out to I think it's like developer.android.com or developer.google.com, mm-hmm. they actually show the la- every every month they release the prior months stats mm-hmm. for what percentage of OS is out there. Yeah. And they actually Which is good, they need to. And, I mean, and the interesting thing that that I find about that too is is that I when I talk to people, the lower end Android users, they don't go into the app store that much. Mm-hmm. But that's what that actual stat is grabbed from. It's grabbed from connectivity over the prior month. To the App Store. To the App Store. So there's an even <laughs> higher percentage of low-end Android devices that are even accounted for yeah. out there. But they wouldn't be doing anything anyways. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, when you get those super low-end ones, I you know, I want to say like the Cricket phone, you know, or whatever. And I know they got better phones on Cricket, obviously. I, I know uh, the Wheels, you're on uh, uh, Cricket, and that's where he's looking at the devices on, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's got a tablet on there and everything. Um, but... Uh, but no, but those are glorified feature phones at that point, you know? Um, I, I mean, I would personally pick a, a, a Samsung device because it seems like they, they keep up with their ROMs. And they seem better. They definitely do. Um, I don't understand why Motorola has so many problems. I mean, they're <laughs> it's Google technically. But they're not, being, they're not being treated as Google, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So... Um, he said, "Oh, yeah, he does say it is a T-Mobile. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I think uh, I think Russell fans was a was the a my touch is a T-Mobile touch. device. Yeah, but he, his is a T-Mobile uh, Samsung Exhibit Two, and he bought it nine months ago. See, and that's where so and that's where I kind of get frustrated with some of the the carriers and and how Android works and and I don't know if it, whose fault it is, but." They've all blamed Google, each, Google they've all to, blamed each other at yeah, some point. Google has to come out with the with the updated OS. Then the the developer or I'm sorry, the, the manufacturer for that device has to create an installation for that device on that carrier. Yeah. Then they have to hand it over to the carrier. The carrier has to add their stuff to Why? it. Then they have to approve it. Then they hand it back to the to the developer. The developer then approves the carrier changes. They agree on it, and then the carrier pushes it. And that's and I don't understand why there's like. Oh, so, and by the way, there's no money made off of this. So much back and forth, and so there's no incentive for anybody <laughs> so, to so do anything. Would, yeah, they'd rather just sell you a new phone. I mean, I'd rather see. You know what? I'd, I'd go with a. I'd go with an HTC or someone, and if they told me, you know what, we're going to charge you fifty bucks a year, mm-hmm. but we're you're going to have OS updates within. A month of them being released. Might okay, well. sure. I mean, you pay for sure. you pay for Xbox, but, you, but you got to get the, live gold. But you got to get them to play ball. You got to mm-hmm. get the pr- providers to pay play ball. All right, that's enough. Sorry, phone stuff. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's good to have this conversation every once in a while to kind of the update the state of what's going on phone wise. Um, but it usually ends up kind of complaining about Android. I notice. Uh, I, know, I mean, on on this device, I love Android. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's snappy. I mean, it's and responsive. Again, and it's, I'm not trying to come off as like an Android hater. I'm going to be very enveloped in Android if something uh, works out here uh, very soon. Uh, so uh, I mean, it just I there are some inherent problems with it. You know, if you're on the bleeding edge of it, that's great. But I, I just you know I think too many just get lost by the wayside, uh, and I think it's a major problem. And and they're identifying it, but but I think by the fact that they didn't release a new version. Mm-hmm. At 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 I O, so, anyways, Google Labs. Some uh, now everything else awesome, Google does is awesome though. Uh, Google Labs. This new. Uh, have you heard about this project Loon they're doing? Mm-mm. So basically, the idea is we're gonna do an elevated Wi-Fi network, literally in the cloud, because there's balloons involved. <laughs> So it's like a hot air balloon. Um, I I, I am going I, I look at the devices. Actually, I think these might be. I don't make balloon chocolate bowls. No, this is a different video. Uh, well, here's the kind of descriptive video of what's going on. So basically, they're 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 raising these kind of repeaters, like Wi-Fi kind of repeater kind of situations up. Probably like what they have in in town on the on the t- on the light po- poles. Uh, yeah, probably something like that. I, I don't know uh, completely. And it's going to be three G level speed internet. Uh, but they raise it up on a balloon, and 
that's and the, the idea is you have a grid of these um, across you know whatever municipality or well you know eventually hopefully worldwide so there is a distributed internet everywhere that everybody can reach out to that's in the what, sky what, what goes up must come down <laughs> well yes <laughs> but the, I think that's I and mean, that's where they're testing stuff down to see like it goes up what are the issues when we put it up there how long does it stay etc I don't know maybe these things will move because I mean there's wind right and maybe they're just all up there moving but there's enough of them there'll be enough of a grid, grid to keep repeating <clears throat> I could see this being re definitely used as a after a natural disaster yeah, I yeah. can see this being used in a lot of applications as a permanent provider. I don't know. It's high altitude. Uh, it, it is gonna, it, it's uh, hopeful to provide internet connections to remote parts of the world. It relies on uh, high altitude balloons to create a connected network in rural areas uh, where the cost of building an internet connection outweighs the advantages of such a network. Um, if it's, if it's uh, uh, successful, uh, it would require balloons to fly twice the altitude of commercial aircraft, so we won't be running into those. Uh, the balloons would then allow homes and businesses to pick up their signals and connect to the Internet regardless of location. <laughs> Wait a minute, then. Can I, get, can I get Wi-Fi on my flight? It's above my aircraft. I can get it on the ground. I want Maybe. it on the plane. I hope so. I don't know. I would think. <coughs> I feel like I, I, I don't know. It depends on the technology, but I feel like the plane would be going too fast to pick up one of these. Right? No, because, I mean, they have stuff where you can quickly switch between access points. Mm -hmm. And I don't think on the ground. Freaking balloons, man. Yeah. And, and, and it is. They did explain a little bit. I heard about this first <coughs> over on, uh, on Twitter this week. Uh, because one of the guys they had on actually got to go photograph it. Um, Up above the airplanes? <laughs> the, the launch, apparently. And I think one of his things is getting featured in the Wired article coming out on it. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, uh, apparently for it to like move up and down, like they have like a, a, a compartment of air that goes into the helium and, and changes the weight of it basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's pretty cool how, uh, how they have that set up. So, uh, I don't know, Shachi, what do you think about this balloon internet situation? I think the environmentalists are going to throw a fit. You think so? Why? Choke the dolphins. I mean, I don't think it, they're like straight uh, balloons. It's something else that's in the sky. Mm. It's just a matter of time. That's true. Honestly. That's true. That's true. Um, but I don't know. It's something to watch out for. And it's just, you know, another X project. Remember, uh, Google Glass was an X project. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. Um, so, uh, it, 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 well, it's going to be 10 kilometers up, Chach. You know, so? So it's like, it's, it's probably going to be a satellite at that point. And that's what I'm wondering. Is this really a satellite? <clears throat> well, and this looks like a picture from the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. They might as well have that Red Bull jumper guy up there. I was going to say, this is like where the Red Bull jumper guy, <laughs> right? So that's what, that was like just a giant balloon, right? That he jumped yeah. from? That's how he got up there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, they, and they're traveling along the jet streams and everything. That's kind of cool. Um, an astro teller. What? <laughs> Captain of Moonshots, Google X. What? <laughs> this is a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I am the captain of moonshots. I am the captain. Yes. I'm completely watching this video afterwards. Uh, but there you go. Project Loon. Uh, pretty cool. All right, Chill. I know you got a couple other cool things in here. Uh, let's go pick the best of the best. Um, do the next to last one. Okay. The sleeping, sleeping Beast Games. Space Team. So this, oh, this is the one you were talking see, I, about. See, I, and, and I'm hoping that someone will come to Pittsburgh and play the game with play you. Play the game with me. <laughs> so that's why I'm bringing it up. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I got so. So it's a, it's this game where you sit around a table, and everyone has a different control panel, like what you would envision in a spaceship, and all the different screens get different commands that you have to yell out and get people at the table to press, mm -hmm. or you're I think your spaceship explodes. But it, it just sounds like such a fun game and a neat concept where you're where you have so many people playing. It's it seems like a fun party game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see on the screen there. Also, the ship is falling <laughs> apart. And people everybody's shaking their iPads. 
Yeah, some of the stuff you have to shake, you, you and you all work together as a team. So this is like a technological party game mm -hmm. in the long run. That's that's pretty cool. But everybody has to have an iPhone. Or an iPad. Or an iPad, something iOS. And, and I think they're working Or an iTouch, or iPod right. Touch. Yeah, it could be any, yeah. And I think they're working, I heard they may be working on bringing it to to Android and, and other devices, but... For right now, I think it's an iOS on my game. There you go. That should be your challenge of the week, Josh. It's free. It's free. It is free over here, so you can no reason not to check it out if you have friends. Now, now you said you've been having a problem getting to play this game, right? Yeah, because I can't get anyone to play it with to you. Play with me. <laughs> not like that, but to to play this game with me. So we play a game. Plan a, can you do this over? Um, it would be great if we could do this over Google Hangout or something. But I guess that probably won't work out because it's probably got to be localized. Yeah, it has to be on the same Wi-Fi network or okay. via Bluetooth. Okay. That'd be cool. What do you think of that, Charge, as a game concept? It, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's a cool concept, but they need to find better ways to make it work. Yeah. Well, I think the whole um, idea of it is that it's like an in-person party game. Like well, because you have to yell across the table what's coming up on your screen to yeah. inform the other user. Yeah. Right. I mean, this this feels like, like, like when we did the... the you have your own screen Pac-Man game, you know, back on the GameCube, you know. So, awesome. It's called Space Team by Henry Smith <laughs> on the app store. From Sleeping Beast Games. From Sleeping Beast Games. Excellent. <laughs> so go check that out. Um, I wanted to touch on here. I'll go pick one. I'll pick one out of my list here. Uh, how about Legos and your iPhone? This is one I found on Wired. Uh, that was who's somebody. Somebody I think like somebody on uh, Google Plus had, had put this out there or something, or maybe it was Sean Graham or something. Uh, but there's a little connector that turns your iPhone into a Lego toy. Because who doesn't love that? I saw ones where they were doing stuff like this, but they were using it to make like um, docks, mm -hmm. like how to make a dock out of Legos, how to make a case out of Legos. <clears throat> why not there you go <laughs> there you go now you have your iphone car going on i mean not as uh technologically exciting as the raspberry pi lego systems we were talking about a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago uh but but still pretty cool uh their their uh adapter pieces fit snugly in your port acting as foundational lego piece for uh you to base anything on want well, to go so back a picture i think that, that was someone who made a case well there's, there's that or is that just or are we a... talking about this one here yeah yeah that actually that that is what that is I mean, I don't know so much a case as yeah. kind of like a backing for it, you know. Uh, but you can completely do that. Now, what would be cool is if you could somehow have the Lego pieces hold a charge and use them as a backup <laughs> battery. Each Lego. So it would be like a power mat. <laughs> of Legos. <laughs> of Legos. Lego power mat. There you go. Somebody get on that. Somebody kickstart that kind of thing, right? <laughs> All right, guys. I think uh, we, had a, we had a lot of awesome stuff. Trella, always great having you. You always you always have the cool gadgets and stuff. You've, I know you, you you tinker as part of your life. That is, yeah, that's what I, I do for a living. That's I tinker, why you're, you're, I tinker you're the, with mobility. So t Tinker with mobility. What is, it's fun. <laughs> can I say the thing where they, somebody asked you to project three years ahead in the model oh, space? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, project three. What, what should we do as projects three years from now? As far as mobility is concerned, I told him like just say Google Glass on everything <laughs> and Oculus Rift, and we'll we'll see where we how close we get, right? I want you know what I want three D Tupac. You want what? I want hologram, Tupac? hologram Tupac. Are you gonna sell that to a bank? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is there, is there a, we can we can you know what we can do. I want holographic meeting rooms where it's like you're in the same room, like like the newer Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. Just have mm -hmm. everyone sitting around the table as a hologram. Now, all by Connect. All by Connect. There you go. You imagine they already did that with that first Connect, that what they're going to do with this new one. What's that? Have you ever seen the one where they did the holograms? Mm -hmm. Where they put an array. We talked about this probably like a year ago on I the show. I saw the background. One where they, they have an array pointing at you, right? And then they have basically this projector array in a circle and there's like this kind of white curtain round mm -hmm. curtain like cylinder kind of thing so as you walk around you see them from that angle that could be kind of cool that could be really cool <laughs> but is it does it look is it projected on the on the screen or is it actually look like a 
if and the, I recall, the screen gives it the three dimensional effect, if or I re- is it? If I recall, it was it was uh, it was like it it looked like I think it was projected from the inside. Okay, you know, and that's what gives you that kind of circular thing because the light's pushing over. Okay, uh, to the other side, and then that's the light you see is is whatever because this light corresponds with this light coming over here, like looking at the guy, you know, and um, I think that's. Uh, you know what I order? You know what? Next time we'll we'll put put this on a slate for next time. However, maybe I can make it over in late July. I have the leap on on order. Oh, so it's that's the map your hands minority report. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to work with Mac Windows, um, that kind of stuff. So we can we can test that out. Throw throw that up, but it, it's kind of like the minority report slash. Can we throw it on Tony this, Stark? Can we throw it on this cracked uh, Mac Mac uh, sure, iMac over here? Why not? <laughs> I, I don't remember what the OS requirements, but HP's putting them in every laptop. Oh wow! So you're gonna have like not only the touch screen, you're gonna have a three dimensional. Apple's got to catch up, man. Mapping. You know how much? But it's going. It's but it's Mac compatible. I can plug so it I into my Air, mm-hmm. and that's where I look at it. At like, okay, I have it. I can take it home with me. I can throw it on my Mac. I can. It's it's a small device. It's smaller than your phone. It's probably it's probably a quarter of the size of your phone, and about the same depth. Mm-hmm. So you could. Sorry, I'm all. There we go. Um, <laughs> That's why I got a monitor for you. <laughs> um, but I can take it wherever I'm going. It's a small driver load. Now, interestingly enough, they're creating their own app store, mm-hmm. but it will work with native applications. How well I don't know. So it's like it, it, it kind of interprets into a a, a a mouse device. Yeah, there it or is. Something. The leap. So I just set that there. So I can just put this on my MacBook. Right. So I mean, well, then no, can I can I do? Will this like kind of turn? I mean, obviously, we have the motion kind of situation. But will this kind of also be able to turn this kind of into a touch screen as well? Like yeah, because I mean, see, like they're, I okay, mean, they're doing here's my problem, and, and I know and that I know this is such a horrible problem. I talk with Muns about this <clears> all the time because he asks, he's like, really, are touch screen PCs a real thing? Well, not, and, and and my thing is, and, and this is my work thing because I'm in front of you know I'm in front of mm-hmm. multiple screens. I think you do the same thing. I got my work computer, I got this computer with my Twitter feed and my emails, my communications, and everything else they have to deal with. Uh, so I'm basically Final Cut, miscellaneous. And then I have something playing, you know, on or, you know, music or video or whatever on my iPad or whatever else I bring up on there. So I'm going like how often I go from video playing on on the iPad to the to the MacBook. And then I'm just like, it's a nice, beautiful, you know, thin screen here. Why can't I just push that button on the Pandora page? You know, when I guess I look at it as my desk at work is not as conducive as yours is here. Mm-hmm. So I'm further. Well, not so much down here, but oh man, wouldn't it be great I'm, if this was all touch? Great. I would love but I'm too this Wirecast setup where I'm just going boom, boom, boom. I'm too far away from my monitor. Mm-hmm. And that's like even at home, the, I have the 30 inch cinema display. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think it and is. And I don't want to be. And I don't think I don't, it is I don't a case for that. I don't necessarily want to be no. that close to my monitor because then I want to be looking left to right to see my entire monitor. That's where I think this really fits. Like if you if you saw like they're, they're, they have a pencil in midair and they're signing something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's it's as if you're touching the screen. Okay, there, but, there's there's that. Um, but I think where it works is like, and to me this is just like my own habits forming from being around touch things things so much. But I know uh, the way IMAX are set up in a school setting. I kept wanting to touch that screen. Mm-hmm. I kept saying, you know, oh here, you know, and I and, but no, I can't do that there, you know. Uh, to show show somebody something, laptops. I think it makes all kinds of sense. I understand it not being in desktop so much or in your cinema business. Now here, here's where I think here's where it, I it's think not going to be. Really see it's that. not going to be a for every every case. You're, it's not going to be for every case, and for for someone like Apple to be able to put that into their devices, mm-hmm. they have. And, and let's use the the new Haswell um, MacBook Air. So the the, the new baseline nine nine hundred ninety nine dollar. Um, device used to be a 64 gig device. It's now 100 or it's 128. They didn't lose money by increasing the size. Mm-hmm. They're probably not making any more money. The price of the device, the price of that memory size came down mm-hmm. that it was at least equal mm-hmm. and they could upgrade you with that without charging the customer more. And that's this is something I'm seeing with Apple more and more. You have to get to a break point 
where the, the where they're creating it's supply demand. Yeah, and and there there's enough supply out there because there's a demand. We're not going to they could put it in there for the same price. Mm -hmm. As whatever they're putting in there today. They're not going to put it in just because. And we've seen this. And we've seen mm -hmm. this a lot. They're like, oh, why didn't they put... Why hasn't Thunderbolt been on there for so long, right? Mm -hmm. It's been expensive. Why yeah. can't... Why, why can't... Well, here's a... I mean, and, and this is no expense at all. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're worried about cutting into their other areas. Why can I not Bluetooth connect a mouse to my iPad? I'll tell you what. The Motorola Zoom tablet, love it for that one reason. Mm -hmm. I can connect mm -hmm. a mouse... To my device. Yeah, they, again, <clears throat> undercutting, controlling the experience. They're they're good. Mm -hmm. Then they're, why would you buy a Mac Air? Right. You know, those couple little things, right? So. But you could do Final Cut. You can do a lot of things from the Mac mm -hmm. that you can't do from the iPad. But and maybe one day we'll get to the point where it's just a bunch of tablets with dockable keyboards. They use the um, Windows type in, environment. Of what they're trying to do with the Surface and. I'm interested. I'm interested to see how devices. well the sleep work or the, the sleep motion works. Yeah. So that's the next thing. It's only eighty bucks for the yeah. pre-order here. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so let us know how that goes, Chilla. He's at Chilla on Twitter. That's me. Anything else you want? Awesome you evangelist. Uh, the awesome evangelist. He's always got a cool gadget. That's why we <laughs> like have him on here. And uh, he's right up the road, so that's handy too. So and Chachi, he's a. Uh, I know the sun was coming out there a little bit. Uh, he's at insertcointobegin.com. He's on AwesomeCast this week in front of the green screen, just a few feet away awesome. from me. Huns what did I say? AwesomeCast? Yes, you're on AwesomeCast right now is what I meant to say. Unsung coming up this week. Keep an eye on it over on pittsburghonvideo.org. Boy, anything coming up? Anything coming up on InsertCoin? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. There will be stuff. There will be stuff of all kinds. Yes. You guys are on your E3 hangover, I know. So. Yes. Yes. So go check that out. At Chachi says. And I'm at Sor oh, Sorgatron. <laughs> at Sorgatron. Sorgatron.com. I'm putting some videos up on my YouTubes. Again, I've been playing with my camera. Nice. Like editing on the phone some more. Uh, uh, shooting some stuff. Doing some vlogs. See how that goes, you know. I got something on my mind. I'm trying to get it up there. So, um, and hopefully, very soon, the awesomest loot crate unboxing you have ever seen. Ever. We'll see about that. Ever. Oh, I got some plans. I we'll got some plans, that. sir. You have no idea the plans I am about to unhatch on these on this loot crate. We'll see. Explosions, green screens. This is going to be the Star Wars. Hopefully, not Episode One of loot crate unboxings. Sir, yeah, uh huh. You can drop a line and your loot crate unboxings over at contact at awesomecast.com, Google Plus, Facebook at awesomecast on Twitter. Uh, and you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com for the chat room. Uh, they've been bumping all night here, getting ready, uh, also getting ready for the wrestling show, it seems. Uh, so thanks to them, they have been our, uh, an awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.